Okay, thanks. So, so Heidi and I have just a couple of slides to add to, some, to a lot of the, the points that were addressed here, and then basically a few questions to pose to you, and then we'll just open the discussion. Um, so uh, one thing that I wanted to bring up that, that has been a little bit implicitly mentioned, especially in Judith's talk, is that ever since sort of the days of Mendel and, and Galton, uh, in human genetics there's this been, uh, th there has been this persistent divide into uh, studies of rare severe diseases and common complex diseases, where we have this kind of focus on coding, coding um, a rare variant with large effects studied by exome sequencing in the context of Mendelian disease and cancer. And then there is the sort of the Chiwas community looking at com common variants in non-coding regions, regulatory effects, Chiwas um, uh, mapping with, with uh, SNP arrays and, and genome sequencing technologies. But of course, we know now very well that this this is not the full picture. And actually, even though there are, of course, major differences in genetic architecture of human diseases and traits, this re represents a continuum. And I just added here a couple of references of recent papers that have been demonstrating these impacts across uh, various different types of traits, coming both from the Chiwas perspective, showing uh, uh, effects of strong, strong effect rare variants, and coming from um, uh, rare disease communities looking at uh, things like modified penetrance. And under understanding this, this continuous architecture and bringing these communities together to actually address various different types of variants having joint effects on human phenotypes will, I think, be really interesting and, and valuable for this community for the next uh, five and ten years. Uh, this slide addresses many of the points that were covered by the previous talk, so I'm not going to get into this in, in detail, but just to kind of re-emphasize the point that when we think about genetic associations and all these, these um, uh, genetic uh, effects on human traits that have been discovered thus far and will, that will be discovered in the future, there are a lot of things that we still need to learn about how these tiny genetic perturbations actually impact complex human traits. But there is a lot of, lot of very, very valuable information that will be gained as we advance in, in, in learning these, these different aspects. And as we move from the sort of uh, more molecular effects, thinking about causal variants, their approximate effects on, on genome function, to more sort of phenome physiological effects, we will need to use the full range of tools from uh, cell line models, organoids, model organisms, and then also large-scale ex vivo human data. We can cannot understand complex physiological functions by studying just cell lines. And, and actually, we can uh, address many of these questions using, using different types of approaches and data sets. Let's, uh, if we, for example, think about gene function, one can think about um, experimental perturbations in, in model organisms, or one can also think about large-scale human data sets um, to, to study these questions. That's the couple of slides that I have, and I'll give it over to Heidi.